this this game was so intriguing for me. Put it on. I love the FA Cup. I hate when Premier League and FA Cup games are on at the same time. I would never, I don't think they should be allowed to be played at the same time. That's my humble. But from the quarterfinals onwards, 110% not. But they were. So I had both games on. And I thought that Spurs were majestic. They were brilliant. They were, they were, did I say finals about the City thing? Cool, semi-finals, sorry. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean. Semi-finals, I apologise. But last week, Spurs were majestic. They, they, they were deadly. They were so resolute at the back. There was a strength about them to go away to one of the hardest grounds in England in the last 12 to 18 months and not just win, not smash and grab, but to completely outclass Aston Villa. We all remember what Aston Villa did to Manchester City at that ground. They probably should have conceded a penalty to Arsenal, but they beat them. And what Spurs did to them last week was nothing short of spectacular. It was absolutely out of this world. Yes, they remained in fifth, but of course, they want to capitalize on that. They, they, they played their game. They've almost played their game in hand as well. Not with Villa, because Villa played tomorrow, but with everybody else. And this was the time to capitalize on that, to pull yourself away from Man United in sixth, who I don't think will come in the top five this year. We've not been consistent enough, but football is a humbler. And can Man United get seven more points than Spurs in the last seven games? You can't say that's impossible. You may not think it will happen, but it being impossible is another thing. And it's matches like this away at the Fulhams. And now, no disrespect to Fulham, they play good football, they're a good team, but this is 12th in the league. This is, I think, where Spurs have to look at this and say, these are the areas that we need to improve on. We have a style of play that's being developed, but better players are needed that can produce more consistently. You cannot be looking to make it as a regular team into the Champions League and then a team that challenges for the title when not just losing these games, but performing like this. It's, it's such a poor day at the office. I'm looking now just at the list of players that started the game. I'm thinking to myself, who really stood out and had a good performance? I can't really think of anyone. You may actually say Vicario, even though he conceded three goals, he did pull off some good saves. Madison was comfortable on the ball, but didn't really do anything. And that's the problem with a player like Madison. The eye test was still passed today, but the end product was absolutely non-existent. I thought Son was so poor for a man of his qualities. Brennan Johnson, he looked like that flop player the likes of Kate uh, have called out in the past. And I thought the midfield of Basuma and Saar was absolutely Boston dominated by the likes of Lukic and Paulinia. It was... Man for man, player for player, it was a really poor performance from Spurs. I thought tactically as well, from the first whistle until the last whistle, Fulham had Tottenham's number today. And Big Ange was too slow to react. He didn't make the right changes. And he could never get Spurs back into this game at any point. And it will be a very, very disappointing evening indeed, I think, for everybody associated to the club, especially last week after... We had a number of Spurs fans that came onto our reaction show. We had a lot in the comments. And then we had a few people that also said um, on other shows in the week that, that they have a, they think they can come third. So anyone who was predicting third, and they didn't say which club, I think they were alluding to Arsenal. They said they think they're going to finish third above Arsenal. They didn't quite say Arsenal's name. They didn't want to say their name, but they said one of the top three currently is going to collapse and they'll catch them. Well, they're, they're currently 10 and 11 points off respectively, those top three. There's a big dent in what those um, live, uh, those Spurs fans think are going to happen. Plus, we have had three or four Sp Spurs fans pull out of the match reaction. Suddenly, girlfriends have booked dinner tables. Parents are doing X, Y, and Z. They've got to go out all of a sudden. Um, they didn't say that at nil-nil. But when that third goal went in, the, the speed of which those DMs came into me was, honestly, they'd beat Usain Bolt in a race, I'm telling you now. Uh, Terry, do you think Spurs will bottle top four? Um, look, they weren't in the top four today. They weren't in the top four yesterday. So using the word bottle may be a little bit too extreme at this point, but according to a few of the in the know journalists, top five is probably going to be good enough in the Premier League to make it into the Champions League next year. I think coming fifth, if they miss out narrowly, some will say they bottled it because being top off the 10 games and they fell away. But most Spurs fans, when we're being fair, and when we're being honest, felt they were going to fall back. It was almost, we're punching well above our weight. Things will settle down. 
So for the majority of Spurs fans and the majority of football fans, we all knew there'd be a, a decrease. I still predicted them to make the top four. I believed it would have been Villa that tapered off worse. And I thought that Spurs would continue to get better because I do think their squad overall is better than Villa's. So I don't know. I don't know if you can call it bottling it per se. I don't think Spurs are collapsing overall right now. I just think we, we're seeing the manager in his first year in the Prem with a squad that is just about good enough to qualify for the top four at its best. So a lot more investment needs to come into this team. However, they end up finishing sixth. And for instance, Manchester United finished above them after having one of our worst seasons in the history of our football club. Then you have to criticize it in a different way. Man United can't lose more games in a league season since they were relegated. Can't have a worse, the worst win percentage of something like 72 years. Lose at home to Bournemouth for the first time, conceding three goals for the first time in our club's history, plus a plethora of other records like that broken this year and still finish behind us. Not when the world is waxing lyrical about everything you're doing. That is where it becomes a far more painful season because I think Champions League football will be a great re reward for this Spurs team. And a lot of people say you shouldn't celebrate the top four. Top four is not a trophy. Champions League qualification is not a trophy. I hear this nonsense all the time. Those same very people that nearly always part of Standard FC, those same very people say Arsenal can't win the Champions League. They don't have enough experience in it. And yet get angry when people celebrate getting into the Champions League to gain experience in it to become a better team. <laughs> make it make sense. It's a paradox. It, make, it doesn't make any sense. You can't twist it. Spurs need to be in the Champions League. Yes, for money. And yes, it helps attract people. But if they have serious ambition of becoming the top, top side, you've got to play in that competition regularly. Most clubs that spend a long time out of it or haven't had a long time in it need to build up a pedigree. And it's been a few years now. Do me a favor, uh, Kate. She's the only Spurs fan who's turned up backstage. Put your hand up and tell me how many years it's been since Spurs are in the Champions League. Is it two or three, four? Yeah, I don't know. We're in it two se last season, weren't they? What last season? It's only been like once, I think, in the last five years. Maybe I might be wrong since the final, but you guys in the comments will know as well. It's, it's only been once in the last four or five years, anyway. So the point is, any experience they built up on the pot will start to dwindle away because it wasn't 20, 30, 40 years of experience, and they need to get more. So it's a huge thing now if Spurs don't make a Champions League position from this point. It really is. And look, I'm a big fan of Ange Postacoglu. I love what he said this week about the, the calling fans that are not from the town the club's based in or the city the club's based in, Plastics. I think that when I grew up, what a Plastic fan was. And by the way, you could I had a friend who was from Manchester, supported Man United, but he was a Plastic. He wouldn't be able to name you half the squad, knew nothing about the club's history. You'd say, oh, good result today. And he'd go, oh, did we play? That's a Plastic fan who tip, it, it, it doesn't says he's a fan but doesn't support the club. You're not a plastic fan if you travel halfway around the world twice a year, spending sh damn loads of money watching your team. You're not a plastic fan getting up in the early hours of the morning to watch your team. Some people also choose to support, team support teams from the other side of the world that don't even win because they love the Premier League. They love English football. They're not plastic. So, so I loved what uh, Big Ange did there. I love his brand of football. And if I remove my bias for a moment, if I remove my bias for a moment, I don't want Spurs to get better as a Man United fan, the same as I don't want Arsenal being this good, the same as I don't want Liverpool and City to be where they are. But if I remove that, and I'm Terry Fleur, the host of the Football Terrace, I really want to see the right players purchased for Big Ange Postacoglu because I think he can develop something very potent, very dangerous, and, and, and very deadly in the Premier League. But I looked at the game tonight, and listen, Dragusen, he, he, had, a, he, he had a poor night tonight. But listen, I've seen one of the best centre-backs in Premier League history, have a nightmare on his debut in the Manu Vidic. I'm not saying he's Vidic level. You've got a Dogi who I think has been excellent this year, but he's still young and he's still raw and he's got to, to learn. And the same for Basuma and Saar, especially Saar. They started the season like a freight train, but young players are going to be up and they're going to be down. So they really need to improve on those areas, I think, in the summer. And then when it comes to the attacking options, yes, they've scored, I think, 59 goals this year, which is good. Son is fairly prolific. But I still think they've got to invest some more money to bridge that gap between where they are with goal scoring and clutch moments in league games, what they had with Harry Kane, because they could have a bad, bad game with Harry Kane there 
and they'd still nearly always have opportunities to win it. So I think still multiple areas need to be improved in this team. And I'm sure there's other positions that Spurs fans want to talk about as well.